1 Corinthians chapter 10, the history of Israel is an example to all of us believers. Israel's history is an example to all of us. Paul writing to the church at Corinth. Now, if you watch the church of Corinth, the church at Corinth represents all of us. The church at Corinth represents those of us, the Gentiles, because Corinthians are the Gentile church. So, Paul is writing to the church at Corinth to correct what is going on in that church. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. He's telling the church at Corinth. I would not that you be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Paul is writing. He said, all our fathers, every one of them were under the cloud and all of them passed through the sea. And were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. Then their leader was Moses. And did all eat the same spiritual word, meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. But with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now let's bring this home. What Paul is trying to say is that just because you and I profess to be Christians, does it mean that one, we are all going to go to heaven? That's what Paul is saying. They were all in Egypt. They all went through the Red Sea. They were all covered by the clouds. Every one of them saw the miracle that God performed in the wilderness. They all drank from the rock. When Moses spoke to the rock, water came out of the rock. They all drank. But with all of them, God was not well what? Pleased. In the same way, one day, it will happen to some of us, if not all of us. We sit in the church. We sang. We held the Bible. We read. We had communion. We did everything. But one day, the Lord says, I never knew you. It is very important that we really pay attention, pay heed to this. Very, very important. See, some have taken church to be like a business. So they could care less for your soul. All they care for is money. As long as their bank account is being inflated, they are okay. You are a Christian to them. But when the bank account begins to go down, then they become concerned. So you become a customer. But you are not a customer. You are a soul for whose sake Christ came and died. There is a destination. You know, today they talk about destiny, destiny. And the destiny they talk about is not about heaven. They talk about material things. The destination is heaven. Don't let anybody talk about that. You rest with your destiny. So the things of this world, God knows where he wants to put you. So don't let anybody come and sow a seed for your destiny. You don't sow a seed for any destiny. That lies, messages that they are delivering, those what they call themselves, uh, what you, motivational speakers who have changed themselves into preachers. Bible says that they are like angels, Satan's angels who change themselves into an angel of all light. Destination is heaven. Where will you spend your eternity? We are just transiting through this world. We are like the children of Israel traveling in this wilderness called what? World. Overshadowed by the clouds. Rain falls upon us. We've been baptized unto Jesus Christ. One day we shall all come to the end of this life. And the question is, where would you spend your eternity? That is the destination. Hello? That is what? Our destination. Our destiny. Heaven or hell. So Paul writes to them and says, but with many of them, God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. Do you hear that? The things that happened to the children of Israel are examples 
for us today. Examples. It is only the one who the Bible calls a fool who sees those things and ignores them. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil word things as they also lusted. Today, the church is full of lusters. We lust after evil things. Christians, we lust after what? Evil things. About after the things of this world, the material things of this world. When we talk about lasting, the first thing people begin to think is that after a woman, no, that's not not that alone. Material things. We lust, we covet. Wealth, is that right? Money is the ends of everything. So even some pastors go to the extent of buying powers from idols, they go and buy what? Powers from what? idols and they bury it under the pulpit because what they've been made to think is that as you bury it over there it will bring many more what customers not saints not believers customers numbers some even bury animals and they said the worms that come the number of worms is going to determine how many people souls come so please don't let your eyes be fooled. So many are moved by crowd. When you see crowd, yeah, that is where the anointing of God is. Uh -uh. Paul in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he says, no one that Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. So, he's, so his servants or his ministers also transform themselves into angels of light. They speak in tongues, they prophesy, they cast out demons. And those of us who are sold to those kind of doctrines, we run after them. And some of them are on the phone with them or prayer. You don't know the person in pe you don't know the person from anywhere. Why you got the power you don't know and you are praying with that person? People, I just don't know. Say, so neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to what? Eat and what? Drink. And rose up to what? Play. That's what they did. Moses had gone to the mount to get the commandments. And they said, this Moses, we don't know what has become of him. Aaron, make us a god. Aaron, for fear of them, took their earrings and made them a god. And he said, Israel, behold your god. Worship. And so they worshipped, they sat down, they ate and drank fornicated, did all kinds of things. It is happening today. Please, let us say, hmm, yeah. But it's happening what? Today. We fornicated in our hearts. If not in the physical. Hello? Jesus says, when you look at a woman lustfully, you've already what? Committed what? Fornication. If you look at a man lustfully, you've already committed what? Fornication in your heart. So neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit what? Please, verse 8. Neither let us what? Uh, please, read it. Satan wouldn't want you to open your mouth. Let us not commit what? Let us not commit fornication. But that is the area Satan hates a lot. And that is the weakness of so many of Christians. Fornication. Some people call it fornification. I don't know whether, where they got the extra F from. Let us not what? Commit fornication. In God, you call it a drama. You can have one boy, a drama. A tree, a friend of a drama. Man, 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 you're a boy, a drama. A drama, a boy, fornication. A drama, a boy, fornication. A drama, a boy, fornication. So let us not commit fornication. 
It has to enter into our spirit. Because the Bible says that every sin that a man commits is outside of the body. But the sin of fornication is against the body. It will land you in a place you don't want to be. Momentarily, you may get the excitement, but it will send you into a place you don't want to be. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell one day, three and twenty, how many? Thousand. Twenty-three thousand people died. So many of us are walking, we are spiritually dead, man, because of fornication. We are spiritually dead. We are just going through the emotions. Hello? Going through what? Emotions. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of what? Serpents. We tempt. Do you know why they were destroyed of, of the serpents? These are men who rose up against Moses in the wilderness. Dathan, Abiram, and Korah. They raised about 120 people, more than that even, and they rebelled, uh, rebelled against Moses. Do Moses, do you think you are the only holy person? You think you are the only, we are all also leaders. We can do what you are doing. That spirit is still working today. We, up to all nations, we experienced this several times. We had Dathan, Abiram, and Korah who almost tore the church into pieces. But thank God he saved us. When you rise up against the man, the lead, the set man, the servant who have been set before you, you are not tempting him. You are tempting who? Christ. You are tempting Christ. Especially when that servant has laid his life down. But I'm not talking about when he's living in opulence, but when he has laid his life on down. Moses laid his life down. God says he was the meekest. And because of that, God destroyed Datham and Abiram. He opened the earth and buried them, swallowed them up. As soon as that happened, the rest who were, they started sympathizing with those who have been killed. So they started murmuring and against Moses. And God said, ah, you're also doing it immediately. He caused fire to start. And serpents were eating them from the back. He said, this is an example for us, those of us. An example for us. Example. Neither mama, as some of them murmured and were destroyed of what? The destroyer. Murmuring. Murmuring. When you go to see the doctor and the doctor say, there is a heart murmur, you know you become afraid. Is that right? But we mama. Even in the presence of God, we are still what? We mama, I think, because we think the person we are memorying against cannot what? Hear. But God does what? Hear. So he said, let us not mama. Let us not mama. Because if you mama, it's going to incur the wrath of God. Now all these things happened unto them for examples. And they are written for us, our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are what? Come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take it, lest he does what? Pastor Paypal, if you think you are standing, take it, lest you do what? For. I'm speaking to myself. If you think you are standing, take it what? You fall. That is why prayer is very essential. Now, I'm not talking you wait until Sunday morning when you come and pray. <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, when, every day wake up early and seek God's word. Face. It is important. That is what has kept me for how many years? From 1960 something. Over 50 years. Prayer. Prayer. 
up early in the morning. God is faithful. The uh, God that we serve is faithful. You don't need an alarm clock. The Holy Ghost will wake you up. The Holy Ghost will do what? Wake you up. He has never disappointed me for them 50 something years. God has never disappointed me. He will wake me up at the right time. At the right time, he will wake me up. Amen. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Therefore let him that thinketh he standeth take it lest he do what? Fall. Take it. Lest you fall. Satan does not fear any one of us. <laughs> don't let anybody make you think that Satan fears you. That's it. The only person Satan fears is the one who defeated him on the cross of Calvary. Jesus Christ. He's the only one Satan fears. That is why he said, abide in what? Me. Abide in me. I love Paul. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Paul writes, he says, I know of a man 14 years ago caught up. Whether in the flesh or in the spirit, I don't know. But he was taken to the dead heavens. He's talking about himself. But he will not, he said, I will not glory in myself. It's a dead person. You think, Pastor people, if they caught me into the third heavens, I'll say, I know of a person. Oh, that, 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 that. hey, 14 years ago, they took me to heaven. I was in the presence of the Lord. I heard everything. What does that do? Puts you on a pedestal. Everybody looks at you. You are super what? Spiritual. Paul says, I will not. Lest you think of me too highly than you ought to what? Think of me. Let him that thinketh he standeth take it lest he do what? Fall. Because the adversary, Satan loves those who brag. Because you become an easy prey for him. Those who brag, Satan loves. Because Satan is the father of bragging. The Bible says pride goes before what? For. Let him that thinketh he stands take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation. Watch it. There has what? No temptation. Taking you by such as is common to what? Man. Hello? God is faithful who will not suffer you to what? Be tempted above that you are what? Able. So now every trial that comes to you and I, you know that God is what? Faithful. Is that right? Yeah. It doesn't matter how severe it appears to you. God has already made a way of escape. Yeah. He has already made a way of escape. So then if you and I find ourselves under the the trial, there's the, the, the temptation. You are being drawn into somebody's bedroom when you know you are not married to that person. Or you are being drawn to a hotel when you know you are not, you have no business to be there. And you are following. It is your choice. It is your what? Choice. Because God has made a way of what? Asking. You cannot go and fornicate and make an excuse for it. Because you chose to go. Hello? You cannot lie and make an excuse. God has made a way of asking. God, the moment that thing comes, the Spirit of God, He will not push you. He's so gentle. He'll say, say no. But Satan said, say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. There has no temptation, never, no temptation that has come to you and I, that is not common to everybody. What he's saying that everybody, every saint is going through the same what, temptation. Every saint is going through the same trial. There is no trial that you are is confronting you that others are not what going through. You have headache today. Somebody also is having headache somewhere. Hello? So that you will not say, Why me alone? Somebody somewhere is having a headache. Whatever 
whatever you and I are going through, somebody somewhere is going through it. And God has made a way of what? Escape. All you and I have to do is to look to what? Him. Yield not to temptation, for yielding a sin. Each victory will help you. Some other to win, fight manfully upward. Dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry. I love the way the Lord carries us on his back. He carries you and I on his back. And you think you are the only person on his back. No, somebody else ho lifts, hops up back and he can carry the whole of you on his back and still not bend his back. He's still walking straight. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you to. Oh, ask the Savior to help you. He will comfort, strengthen, and keep you. He is willing to aid. He carry you. Hi, he will carry you through. I remember. Let me share with you. I remember this. I had just come from boarding school. I've come on an ex uh, meeting. Soon as tech came on meetings, and that was the time the Lord has just healed me of my. And he has unctioned me. The power of God. So let's go. I wake up early in the morning. I'll preach. People turn up the light, listen, the students. But I was 73. We started the scripture union. Study room only. See all the students. The power of God was really at work. People, students will come. And the scripture union, it was like a church of Pentecostal church. We would and then we would play the table. Power of God was that. So we come to meet her. And as soon as I got home, I was in my room. Then my one, one of my uh, nieces came. He said, Brother Joe, uh, Uncle Joe, uh, somebody is looking for you. I said, oh. I said, this girl. I said, tell, tell, tell her I am not home. I am not home, period. This is a girl who, when I was in school, wrote a letter. Before I opened my uh, 32 uh, teeth, white and everything, that, <laughs> hey, the time when you are enjoying the grace of God, yeah. that is when the temptation comes. Yeah. Took the letter, tore it, tore it. Her, it came home. He had that. She had that account. She was that. I'm not home. Beloved, you and I have to say what? No! Mm -hmm. The woman, can, the girl can give you all the scholarship she wants. Say no. <laughs> but so many of us have sold us. So when they come, you just allow them. And little by little, that is, that is the lie Satan uses. And gets to your heart. And the moment your heart is given unto a young girl or whatever you are not married to, you have entertaining idolatry in what? In your heart. That's why I say so many of us are practicing what? Idolatry! Because there is a girl sitting on the throne of your heart. Or there is a boy sitting on the throne of your heart. Your heart. You spend all your time and energy. More time than you spend with God. That is idolatry. And it says, let us not commit what idolatry. I told her, no, that was the end of it. I have never, I don't know where that girl is in her. I don't know where she is. Hopefully, she also come to know Jesus Christ. And she is beautifully married to somebody. God gave me the way of escape. He said, stay indoor and tell her you are not him. Me 
There hath no temptation taken you that such is not common to all men. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are what? Able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to what? Bear it. You may be able to what? Bear it. Thank God for Joseph. Joseph had full scholarship. Joseph from, from Egypt. This is a man. I thank God for Joseph. Joseph's brother threw him into the they were going to kill him. But his senior brother said, let's not kill him, let's sell him. But they put him in a dungeon in a home. And he was delivered. So to the Ishmaelites. And what did they do? They took him. And they also sold him into Egypt. Potiphar came to Potiphar's house. Immediately, because of the favor of God, he was made the prime minister of Potiphar's house. You know, you can be made prime minister in your own home. Prime minister. He was in charge of everything. But Potiphar's wife wanted something more. He said, Joseph, I'm giving you full scholarship. Not only are you in charge of everything, you are also in charge of my body. You can do whatever you want to do with my body. And some of us here, if we are given that scholarship, you will jump for it. <laughs> All you need is a young lady strip him herself in front of you. Or a young man strip himself before you. And some of you watching, not most of you watching by, by YouTube, also the same way. But Joseph said, no. Joseph said, no. The woman proceeded to force him. How are you giving me scholarship now you are forcing me? I thought scholarship is choice. I can choose to accept the scholarship and choose what? Not to. But this woman Say, I'm going to force you. Whether you like it or not, by force, by fire. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, we have churches we go today by force, what? By fire. God, you must answer you by force, by fire. How do you force God to answer you by force, by fire? So, jumped on Joseph. Took Joseph's shirt. He said, oh, you want my shirt? Okay. You can have it. Hey. I have my legs. I can run. So Joseph took off and fled. The way of what? Escape. The way of what? Escape. Paul writes, he says, flee all appearances of what? Evil. Even if it appears, if it appears, flee! But so many of us, we only flee. We say, my father who art in heaven. <laughs> Hallowed be thy name. That kingdom come. Lead me not in temptation. Lead me not in temptation. Lead me not in temptation. Uh -uh, you can't say that. Bill. Lead me not in And then the man keeps like, oh, oh. Okay, I'll give you this. I'll give you that. Are you sure? You mean that you're going to give me that? <laughs> Joseph fled. He did what? Fled. What did Joseph do? What did Joseph do? He fled. You don't think that what did he do? Joseph fled. He fled. What did Joseph do? Fled. I like that. Oh. What did Joseph do? He fled. What did he do? He fled. I think it's something to remind you. Fled. He fled. Joseph fled. You and I have to do what? Flee. Flee. You flee. Joseph fled. Bare chested. Run. The woman lied on him. They put him in jail. He would rather be in jail. In physical jail. Than be in a spiritual world. Jail. Amen. And whilst he was in a physical jail, God himself promoted him. 
he became the prime minister of the prison. Can you imagine if you, when you walk with God, everywhere you go, he will make you a prime minister. He was the prime minister in the prison. God gave him a unique gift of interpreting dreams. He interpreted a dream and what that led to his what? Freedom. But when he came out and interpreted the dream of the, the king, Pharaoh, he was promoted to prime minister. The whole of Egypt was a prime minister. Through trials, the Lord promotes us. Amen. Amen. Through what? Trials. The Lord promotes us. There has no temptation every trial that comes, know that at the end of it, if you and I are faithful to God and we don't fall for that trial, that temptation, God is going to elevate us. He's going to elevate us. On your job! Something will be set in front of you. And you'll be tempted to go and do something. That, if you fall for it, is going to lead to your demotion and you will end up being fired. But if you don't fall for it, it will lead to your what? Promotion. It will lead to your promotion. Your boss man will insult you. And you may want to insult him back. Well, well. You see? But if you hold yourself and love him back, it may lead to your promotion. Amen. Thank you. Boss man insults you. <laughs> you don't know. I'm from Africa. <laughs> Take your badge. I don't want this job. And if you like, follow me outside. I'm going to show you who I am. The man said, I'll take my badge. But follow you outside. It's too hot outside. Go alone by yourself. And don't come back in. But if you hold your peace, yes. they'll be sitting and they say, wow, this guy, there is something about this guy. Hallelujah. We need to promote him. Yes. He needs to be in our administration yes. because he's a peace word. Yes. Maker. Yes. Finito. We prepare our hearts for our communion. Amen. Amen. There is none holy as the Lord.